Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's weekly tips and tricks video. Uh, in this video, we're going to be covering how to create easy overlap animation on objects like this. Uh, this is a rope here in this example, but it can apply to things like tails or even characters when you're dealing with limbs or let's say when going from pose to pose. So this animation itself actually only has, uh, let's say, two keys on each actual controller as far as the rotation goes. It has a value on one side. Well, let's say, let me select a curve right here where we have this value here, which is 40. And then we'll see at the end frame, it's actually 40 as well. And then we have a different value in the middle. So we're actually only dealing with two separate values here. And all we're doing is simply offsetting some of the keys in the graph editor to create this overlapping animation. So it's pretty simple. And let's go ahead and walk through this example so we can actually see how this is done. Okay, so what I've got here is I've just got a simple rope rig, which is basically just a cylinder with a bunch of divisions in it that have been kind of duplicated and positioned next to each other and combined. And then I just created a simple twist a former to kind of twist them around one another to look and make it look like a rope. And then I went ahead and rigged that just to a simple, let me go ahead and hide the geometry real quick, just an FK chain of joints and then created some simple controllers just to go ahead and easily control these joints. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start off by creating some of my initial posing. So I'm going to select all these curves and if I'm at frame zero here, I'm just going to go ahead let's say put it in a position like this. Let's say I'm just gonna go ahead and make some even values. So if I set that to be 30, and then the rest of these to be maybe 40, that should work. So I'm just gonna select all of them and hit S to key it. And then I'm just gonna go to the end of my timeline here and hit S as well to key it again, since we know it's gonna be the start and end pose we want this to be at. So we know that any other pose is gonna be somewhere in the middle here. So if I go to about frame 25, which is halfway through, I'm just going to reverse all of these values. And the easiest way to do that is just do times equal negative 1. So I'm just multiplying it by a value of negative 1. And you can do this for any field inside here where you could, if you want to do, let's say you wanted to add 10 to all these values, you could do plus equals 10. So it's nice to have the ability to do that in some of these fields when you want know you want to multiply, divide, subtract, or add upon by a certain factor. So I'm just going to do times equal negative 1. And we're going to set a key for it to look like this on the other side. So if we go ahead and hit play now, what we're going to see is it's very even. Because all of the values are beginning and ending on the same frames. Well, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to open up the graph editor by going to Window, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. And if I go ahead and pull this over into my view here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to begin to take these curves and basically not only edit the curvature of the actual curve itself, but also edit the time in which they actually hit these values. So for starters, I'm going to select all of the tangent handles. Oops, I started to move that one. And I'm just going to go in and I'm going to make these as linear as possible on the way in. So this one we can't really tell. So what I'm going to do is actually go and tell it to loop and offset throughout the rest of the animation as it cycles. So if I go through here, you'll see that it actually it shows you this little dotted curve here. And that's basically what's going to be happening before and after the actual timeline itself. So I'm going to go ahead and as I begin to kind of move throughout here, I'm going to be pushing these values past what we initially put them in. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for the rest of the curves as well. I'm just going to click these two buttons. Right here. And then just grab this last one right here. So I'm going to drag this off screen and hit play again. And we're going to see pretty much the same thing because all we've done is we've just pushed the values past where they're at right now. So what we need to start doing from here is just offsetting exactly where these values hit. 
So I'm going to drag this up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the topmost curve. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of the values on this curve. And I'm just going to go in here and it says that the last frame here is at frame 50. So I'm just going to do an, a minus equals. And I'm just going to say, let's say subtract five frames off it. And it's basically going to take this whole curve and slide it back five frames. So I'm going to go here and let's say I want to keep this curve where it's at. I'm going to go down to this next one and I'm just going to go ahead and offset that. So since I kept the second curve at zero, I'm going to go ahead and add five to all the values on this curve as far as where it's at in the timeline. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same for this. So in this case, I'm going to have to add 10 to make it offset five from this curve that's its parent. So plus equals, oops, plus equals 10. And then what we'll see, so we've actually got a curve now that with just a few adjustments easily has a nice overlapping motion to it. Okay, now let's say from here I wanted to go and make the overall motion of this rope a bit more interesting by adjusting the actual position of this parent rope, or let's say the parent controller over the course of this animation. So let's say maybe I want it to move side to side as it begins to go out throughout the animation. So maybe at about frame 20, I'm just going to go ahead and for now use keys that have already been created. So maybe at frame 20, I'll put it at 5. And then maybe at frame 45, I'll put it at negative 5. And then, as you remember, since we created the keys at the beginning of the end to be the same, we're actually going to have to go into our graph editor here and make sure that the end key is at negative 5 as well. And then we can go ahead and kind of move these just as we did. Sorry, I moved that one in the opposite direction at first. So if we hit play, we'll see we've got a bit more of an interesting motion here. And then let's say maybe at frame 20, we also wanted this to kind of bob up and down as well. So maybe at frame 20, we want it to be at one of its low points. Let's see every time it hits, whether it's either the beginning, 20, or the very end, we would have that at its low point, so it would kind of bob up and down throughout. So maybe we could change the overall value on y to let's say negative 1.5 and if I bring my graph editor back up here I'm gonna go ahead and change the beginning and end values to negative 1.5 as well then we're gonna to need to bring it back up so halfway between you know let's say 20 and 45 is roughly about 33 so if I bring that to 0 that should be fine and then let's say if I subtract 13 off this as well that's gonna bring us to about 7 so I'm going to go ahead and set that to zero as well. Now it may look like, you know, we're kind of offset a bit here, but as you recall, if we look in the graph editor, all of these curves are actually kind of looping. So it's going to be okay. It's going to be a constant motion that we're going to have here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. So as you can see, with even very few keys on these control handles here, we've been able to create an animation that adheres to the principle of overlapping motion and actually make it pretty visible with just very minimal effort. So it's very helpful to kind of be able to understand how to use the graph editor to your power inside of Maya whenever you're animating, or let's say inside of any 3D package when you're animating. Well, okay, that concludes this week's tips and tricks video. Thanks again for watching 3dmotive.com.